Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Books of the Month. I'm your host, Dr. O.C. Pringle, and we have a returning guest. He was so awesome the first time he had to come back. Author William Epps. Welcome, Mr. Epps. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Great having you. Great having you. And uh, as before, I know my views have already heard about you and heard from you, but tell us a little bit about yourself again. So um, my name is William Epps. I live in Orlando, Florida, and uh, I'm the owner of the WAG Epps tra- uh, Transport, mm-hmm. and I'm just really, really doing my thing, and then the author of two books, In Search of and Peace and Happiness. Awesome. These are some very, very good books that you all will enjoy, and uh, I know you all are going to want to purchase several copies of both of them when we get through with this interview. In Search of Old Testament Solid Foundation. We had some discussions before concerning the Old Testament. Uh, Before we got into the new, you got to first go through the old to understand understand. the consciousness of God. Let's talk about In Search of. Okay, In in Search of is a solid foundation that when we set up, say for instance, building a house. Mm -hmm. You cannot build a house on an unstable foundation. Right. If you build a house on an unstable foundation, it's going to collapse. Right. It said a house divided against itself cannot stand. Right. So, and and the Lord, the Holy Spirit has been uttering to me to get this out that the people will understand about the Old Testament solid foundation, mm-hmm. that solid thing that we can stand on. That's, that is correct. Yes, sir. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Yes. Let's talk about those. Okay. The first the first five books of the Bible is called the Law of the Books of Moses. Mm-hmm. And then you go into songs and bring the whole 150 songs back and place each one of the hundred uh, each one of them on to the first five books of the Bible. Uh, it's songs one through Songs 39 is uh, put that on to Genesis. Mm. And uh, in there, in the law, and uh, and then Songs uh, uh, 40, I think it's the 56, that goes on Exodus. Wow. And, and then from 57 through, I think it's one. Here we go. Psalms 1 through 41, Genesis. Mm -hmm. Psalms 42 through 70, Exodus. Exodus. Psalms 73, 89. Wow, man, listen, this is out of sight. Psalms 90 through 106, that'll be numbers. Psalms 107 uh, to 150, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Man, I've been preaching for 30 years. I didn't even know that. And that's God's word, Deuteronomy. No, I, I I know that we do not refer to Psalm 1 as yes. chapter 1 and all right. that. In reality, uh, it's, Psalms it's, has it's five chapters. Five chapters, but they call them divisions. Exactly. Yes. Man, this is this is good. Yes. This is good. I'm going to keep this one for myself so y'all can have this one. This is some really, really, really powerful information. Yes. Uh, what are people saying about this book? Uh, there is a uh, static over mm-hmm. how did you get to that point of the ideas. Mm-hmm. It, it is so great that people can see where I'm at, where mm-hmm. I'm going to, mm-hmm. where I'll be taking them. Mm-hmm. And it just, man, the people are on fire just to know more about. Well, I can what, believe that because I yes. know what this is doing to me just by understanding yes. uh, this concept of the scriptures. Being able to rightly divide the word of God is very, very important. Very, very and important. a large part of rightly dividing the word of God, you need to understand uh, how one portion deals with the other and supplements one over the other. And that is absolutely great. That's great right. work. And this would, uh, if you sometimes you can go to the word, you don't get the full meaning of the word. You may have to back up three or four chapters in order to hook on to it to take you through, or either you have to go over four or five chapters, oh, there is the answer. That is true. You know, because the Bible was not written in chronological order. Correct. It was written as they was coming to the central writing point. Mm-hmm. They brought what they was writing, and just like in um, Revelation 
12 and verse 5 and verse 6. There is a period of 2,000 years in between that one verse. Wow. 5 and 6. We're in Revelations again? 12, 5, and 6. 12, 5, and 6. Yes. And two verses, between two verses, yes. you have 2,000 years. 2,000 years. Just later. That's, that's heavy duty stuff, man. Yes. That's heavy duty stuff. And you yes. are a preacher. Yes, sir. <clears throat> How long have you been preaching? Many years. Many years. Many years. I started back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you've been preaching almost as long yeah. as I've been living. Yeah. So I met you now. I'm still carrying the word. And, and, and by, you know, I don't care how much you go, you will never know it all. You never know it all. You never know it all because a little child could come up and give you something and say, how did you know that? Right. I mean, it's because God said it so that even the little children could understand what the word is saying. Early church stage. Yes. It says here in Acts, the church was born somewhat around A.D. 30 at Antioch. Yes. Acts was written by Dr. Luke. Now, yes. I do know that. A lot of people yes. don't know. Right. In reality, Acts could have been called Second Luke, like Second Timothy Luke. And, yes, right. yes. And, and, and Second Corinthians and all of that. Right. Uh, but instead it is called, is named uh, right. the book of Acts or the Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles. It's actually the actions right. of the Apostles right. after the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And so that is some good stuff. But a lot of people don't know uh, this stuff. A lot of people don't know what you and I know. Right. I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> Every book, man, yes. you're just going on uh, uh, all the way to the gospel yes. message, the Baptist doctrine let's talk about that well the baptist doctrine is where the uh where god left the church uh the the two ordinances in the church communion and baptism mm -hmm. those are the two ordinances that god left in the church and we're not supposed to mess those up we're supposed to carry them right to the letter but some people they sharing away from some of them mm -hmm. you know they just let the things just kind of be standstill mm -hmm. you're supposed to go from a to b to c and so forth in the word you're supposed to carry it to the letter and you go to revelation 22 18 and 19 they tell you don't add nothing to it don't take anything don't take away nothing from back that's right because if you add to it it can be added to you in the judgment there you, you go you take away from it it can be taken away from wow you. Yes. Well, well, well. And so the scriptures are aligned here in each portion of the book to help uh, the students study. Yes. Uh, I love it when it where it says here the soul is component in religion. The church is based on personal experience of grace and a regenerated membership. Yes. The church is a spiritual democracy. That's what it is. Spiritual. I like that. I like it. It's all spiritual. Yes. It's all spiritual. Uh, the only way to worship God is in spirit, spirit and, truth. and in truth. Yes. And also here, nearing the uh, end of the book, it says Christian. It talks about Christian growth. Second Peter three and eighteen mm -hmm. says, "Grow in grace." Yes. And you have twelve uh, bullets here uh, concerning Christian growth. Man, you must have a whole lot of time on your hands. Well, I just pack it in here to research. And and uh, just like the word grace. Mm -hmm. See, grace carries a great significance. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know exactly what is grace. Mm -hmm. Grace, the definition of grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Okay, say that again. Grace is God's riches at at Christ's expense. God's, God's riches, riches at, at Christ's, Christ's expense. expense. Christ paid a price for us on the cross. And I may very well use that tomorrow in church. All right. God's riches at, at Christ's, Christ's expense. expense. Somebody's watching. There's a preacher somewhere watching this show yeah. right now, yeah. and they're they're writing it. Listen, give the man some credit, okay? When, when you get up and say, uh, use that uh, statement, say, as my, William Epp said, yes. and so that's very, very good, man. That oh, is a great definition yes, for sir. grace. Yes. Great definition for yes. grace. And um, 
you're selling you're selling many of these or uh, they write at um, they're getting rid of the bloom right now because from from the publisher they keeping me informed uh, close to between 15 by 20 million papers already bouncing on it mm. and so I mentioned uh, that just a little drop in the bucket compared to around the world right you know and now I'm known in uh, Frankfurt Germany just left there in October and in in uh, London in April, in Singapore, this book is known in Singapore and in uh, Sydney, Australia. Wow, yeah. man, you're doing some traveling. Yes, sir. is it okay to ask how old are you? Seventy-seven. And you're doing all this traveling. Getting ready to. Getting ready to travel, man. You are living your life. I love it. Yes, sir. I love it. There are a whole lot of seventy-seven-year-olds out there wish they were able to do that, what you're what, doing. what I am doing. And matter of fact, I walk every day. I get, get my exercise in. Mm. No aches, no pain. Nothing hinder me. Blood pressure normal. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. And God is really blessing me. It's good, man. Because good. I follow the option of the Holy Spirit. I don't go contrary. When God says stop, I stop. Exactly. When God said move, I move. Exactly. Just like what they was doing in uh, Exodus when they was coming out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. God carried them cloud by day and fire by night. By night, uh-huh. And they put that pillar of fire around them by night so could nobody get to them. And it was over three million people was coming up out of, uh, out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But then when they got down to the Red Sea, what happened? You know, they got the grumbling. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, you know, God told Moses to tell the people, stand still and see the salvation. Mm -hmm. So what they did when they told them, stand still and see the salvation, told Moses to stretch forth his hand out and raise his rod. Moses raised the rod and stretched forth his hand out. What do that look like? The cross. The cross will form out of the Red Sea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea where you were headed. Yeah. With that, that's yeah. that's good. That's good. The cross was formed right the, the cross Red was sea. formed at the Red Sea. At the Red Sea. Wow, wow. And then throughout the wilderness, mm -hmm. he told Moses what to do. He told them to build a fire serpent, mm -hmm. put it up on a stick where the people could look up and see it. You don't look down and see it. You know, you're looking up. And the ones that was was uh, was sin, sin sick, Mm -hmm. They got healed when they looked up at it. Wow. Because it is a symbolic of Christ was going to be up on the cross. Oh, hanging on the cross. Hanging on the cross. Man, you have all kind of good, rich information. Yes. Listen, I don't want y'all to go anywhere. We're going to be right back after word from our sponsors to hear more from this wise counsel, the wise counsel of William Epps. He is the author of In Search of Old Testament Solid Foundation. When we come back, we're going to talk about peace and happiness. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Attention churches and organizations. Get your own real estate branch office with the PC Real Estate Firm. No real estate licensing required. This is an amazing economic and development opportunity for your church members and those in your community, city, and state to buy and rent residential and commercial real estate. Your church can become eligible for financial revenue and become a pillar in your community to assist in making home ownership a reality. Learn how we can assist you in expanding into an amazing housing ministry. Join us every week and attend our online seminar for more information. Contact us. The information is below. And we're back. We're still here with William Epps. I know you all have enjoyed him immensely uh, during the first half of this episode. He's still here with us. But we're, now we're going to talk about a second book that he has written, Peace and Happiness. Behold, he is coming. So, no, don't put your notepads up. Don't put your pencils up. Don't put your iPads up. Trust me, you're going to want to take some more notes from this powerful, wise man of God. Peace and happiness. Behold, he is coming. Yes. Tell me, what was your inspiration for writing this one? Well, when when I started with that one right there, we know that the Lord is coming. Mm -hmm. 
we don't know the day nor the hour because he never pinpointed to the day or the hour that he's come. Right. And and it behold us to be ready. We do know that he is coming, and we prepare ourselves for that mm-hmm. great day when he do come. Right. But see, when the it's going to be the battle of the Armageddon before he comes. Okay. And the battle of Armageddon is going to be started up in that northern part of uh, Israel, all the way up in around the Palestine, all the way down through the Kidron Valley, all the way down to Jerusalem. It's 1,600 furlongs. Wait, 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 President. What, how, how do you know this stuff? <laughs> how do in, you know this stuff? In, in search of. Oh, wow. Yeah. In the 1,600 yeah. furlongs, which is 150 miles. 1,600 16, 16, 16, furlongs. It's it 150 miles. 150 miles. Yes. Okay. Go right ahead, man. And, and so what, <laughs> what, what they is going to do, the Battle of uh, Armageddon, Armageddon, and it's going to be led by... Russia, okay, Africa, Turkey, Iran, Iraq, all of those going to be in the battle of the Armageddon. Okay. And then when after they get down so far down to just before they get all the way to Israel, that's when God is going to step in and drop hail, fire and brimstone on them. Okay. And they, uh, in the Thompson Chain Bible, Bible. In, the, in, the, in, the, in the back, in the Concordians in the back, the hail blocks is going to be weighing something like 125 pounds. Wow. Can you imagine a 125-pound block of ice falling on you? Wow. And that's what's going to cover them in the Battle of the Armageddon. And all those ones, it's not going to hurt us. But all the ones that are going to be in the battle fighting against Israel, wow. those are going to be the ones that be destroyed. Wow, wow, wow. And, and then, after that, then he will be coming. Okay. After the battle of Armageddon. That's that first three and a half years. It's a seven-year span in there. The first three and a half years mm-hmm. is going to be the battle of Armageddon. Then the other three and a half years, he's going to come to the earth mm. and put his kingdom. Man, all man stuff is going to be done away with. It's going to be the kingdom of God on earth again. Absolutely phenomenal. Yes. Yes. Absolutely phenomenal. Somebody's watching this show right now and they're going, woo, <laughs> woo. Well, yeah. The key to the mystic number. Yes, that's 66, 666. That's man's Six, number. Man's number. Talk to me about that. This is uh, uh, the vicar yeah. of the Son of God. Right. Okay. So, so you found. I don't know if you all can see that. You'll find you'll find that in the uh, in the Vatican. In the Vatican, where where the Pope is. Okay. Okay. That is the Pope used to wear the symbol of that hat. Okay. But he stopped wearing that hat because they found the six 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 in that hat. And the 666 is man's number. Okay. Six days, if you look at it, six days, God labor. Okay, okay, get ready. Get ready. Get ready, y'all. Yeah. This is going to be good. And okay, the, and go, the, go slow on us. Yeah. Go slow on us. Okay. Six, six days of God labor. Six is man's number. And then uh, that 666 is uh, where, I, as I was saying, it was that in that Pope's hat. Right. And they stop wearing that. You know, the Pope wear the little beanies now. They don't wear that crown hat like they used to wear. Okay. okay. So they put that in, in safe in the in the Vatican. So now in order to dig that out, you have to be a brainstorm to get in there to find that. So, you know, it takes a lot of research. Mm. And through my research I was able to pick that up and put that in where you see right there. Wow. And then another one in there where the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. See, now, I was going to do that one right there, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but what it was, it was already uh, keyed out, so I could not go into that and bring it out, you know? Okay. But they gave me permission that I could hook on a link. You can hook onto that link and go and see it. 
Okay. But you can I can't bring it out to put it in the book. Okay. So I mean I told them I appreciate that. Wow. You know, and then after that, uh then that other three and a half years, Christ will be coming to earth mm -hmm. to lay his to do away with all man's kingdom on earth and he gonna put up his kingdom and that for that thousand years Satan is gonna be cast in that bottomless pit mm. and everything gonna be peace on earth for 1,000 years. Okay. Then after that 1,000 years, then here's come the, everybody's gonna be resurrected up. He gonna nip everybody up off the ground and take them on into, into the heaven. And then when they, when they go into that, and then when he come back, everybody is coming back with him and that's a, and then Satan is going to be coming up out of that bottomless pit. When he come out of that bottomless pit, it's he won't have anybody to argue with because all the ones that are going to be left is his own people. Do you share this from the pulpit? Um, you know, sometimes I, I try to get into that, but I don't get that deep into it. Okay. Because if we get that deep into it, I've already lost the people because they, they would not, be able to comprehend that in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. I just have to kind of bounce softly on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like if I do a teaching class, I can put that out. Mm -hmm. But I just can't go that deep out there because the people would never understand that, you know, until I get them all on board with me. Right. I once get them on board, then they can walk on with me. See, that's where a lot of ministers, preachers, whatever, Sometimes they make the mistake. They drop too much out there. Mm -hmm. The people won't grasp her, and they've been just sitting there. Well, I wonder what is he saying? Correct. You know. Do you do you do you have any mentees that you mentor? Uh, Are yes, you? I'm working on some now. Okay. I'm, I'm the senior senior minister over the senior citizen. I you know, and I have uh, you know about thirty five that I'm meant, uh, being a mentor to over the in the seniors group. Okay. And they are really, really, man, and on fire with me. What about some young ministers, some younger? I'm, wor I'm working to that effect to get some now. Okay. But, you know, sometimes these, the, the younger people has a the mind of their own. Right, right. You know, they want to go with that, uh, 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 say, like the prodigal son, give me mine now. They don't want to wait to see because... We, as the older people, the old man, know how to carry it, but he can't run with it because he don't have the strength. Okay. The young man is strength. Mm -hmm. He can run with it, but he don't know how to carry don't it. Don't know how to carry it. We have to teach him how to carry it. So it takes people carry. like William Epps yes. to help us young folks yeah. carry this thing the right way. The right you way. have a lot of information, man, a lot yeah. of knowledge. Yeah. You are a wealth of knowledge. You are... A human library. Well, thank you, sir. You are a human seminary. Yeah. You are just a human extraordinaire. That's what that, you are. That, that's what it and, is. And uh, I commend you on all of your works, all yep. of your books. Keep on writing. Yeah, you're right. going to Singapore. You're going yeah. to London. You're going to Germany. Yeah. At the age of 77, you're traveling the world spreading this phenomenal Spread. message. Right. Yes, sir. That and, is right there commendable. And, and both of my books right now, there's in London waiting for um, the, uh, we're, uh, the World world Book Fair in London. It's the largest book fair in the world. Wow. And when it once hit London, I mean, it's like wildfire. Wow. It's where it is. Wow. Well, well, to God be the glory. Yes, sir. To God be the glory for the things that he is doing. That's right. And the things that he has done. That's right. Uh, in your life, man. That's right. And in uh, uh, Revelation 1, it, it tells you the things that we have seen, the things we are still looking at, and the things yet to come. Wow. So there are still great things in my life yet to come. Great. Great. Right. Because I have seen, I still see but yet I have not seen. Mm -hmm. But those ones what I have not seen, I'm working to that effect. And what, I believe you're going to see it. Yes, sir. And what Paul said, 
Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a spake child. Spake as a child. When I became a man, what I do? Put I away, put childish, away things. childish things. That's right. So, you know, it's just one of those kind of things. We we in a process of growing. Mm-hmm. We grow, and sometimes we think we've grown, but, you know, it just, my mother used to tell me once a man, twice a child. Twice I never child. could figure that thing out. But now I know what she's mm-hmm. saying. When you said once a man, twice a child, you know, when we was young, we was in the playpen. We was out in the world running wild, and now we're going back to that stage, back to the playpen. Mm-hmm. But, you know, hey, it's still great. Life is wonderful. Wonderful. Life is what you make it. You have That's a right. website. Share your website with us. Yes, my website is, is very easy to uh, to remember. It's wejbooks.com. Wejbooks.com. I want you all to go and purchase both of the books that we've talked about today. And uh, not just one copy uh, per book, but I want you to purchase multiple books. I want you to purchase several of them because this is some good information. And both of these books that we've shared with you, William Epps himself is a walking book. He's a walk, no, a walking library. He's a human library. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you're interested in having William Epps come to your church. Yes. Come to your city and, and, and maybe preach or possibly lecture uh, a group of your preachers, lecture a group of your deacons, lecture a group of your church leaders, That's or right. just people who are wanting to uh, have a better level of consciousness when it comes to the Word of God. Contact William Epps, get him to your city, get him to your church, purchase his books, support this awesome man of God who has so much to offer, not only to the body of Christ, but also to the world at large. That's why you're traveling the world, man. That's why I'm traveling. That's why you're traveling the world. So listen, again, go to the website. All of his contact information is on there. Yes. Uh, You'll be able to reach his office. And uh, I'm sure his secretary will be more than happy to schedule um, him to come to your city. Wouldn't you love him to come? So do that. Take advantage of it. We just don't want him going out of the country. We want to use him in America, too. Yeah, but, yeah. He's all over the place. <laughs> Uh, but we want to use them here also in the States. Well, I know you all have enjoyed this episode. It's been great having you back with us again. Right. Keep on coming back, man. Anytime yes, you want to come, you can return. All Listen, right. tune in next week, same time. God bless you all. Be blessed. All right. <laughs>